Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of our paper, which is entitled International Student Products and Sustainable Development Goals, a Perfect Match. My name is Jens Mjør Pedersen, I'm from Aalborg University. The paper is written together with Jan Frick from the University of Stavanger and Marit Kirikova from Riga Technical University. And it's also, the work behind it is done in, in the framework of the Erasmus Plus strategic project, which is called EPIC, but also in collaboration with colleagues from Brasilia, from University of Brasilia, and from Grupo Gestau, which is a junior enterprise. And the work is carried out, um, co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program. Um, so what is the problem that we are trying to solve? Basically is we need more engineers, we need better engineers, we need to educate people who can not only solve equations, but who can actually solve real world problems. And especially some of the problems with relation to uh, sustainability and sustainable development goals. And also we need more diversity among engineers, so we need to attract um, more different people um, to study engineering and work in engineering. And the Sustainable Development Goals is a very important component of this. So what the EPIC project is all about, it's an international project. Um, it's about bringing students together from not only from Europe, but also from Turkey and Brazil. It's about bringing the students together internationally to solve real world problems, to work across disciplines and also to, to promote the use of IT in education. But I would say that during all this COVID-19, I think almost everyone have been using IT in education. And then again, um, compared, this is a three year project and we are now in the last year. And here in the last year, we have been really focusing on the sustainable development goals as a common framework around the different student projects that we have been doing. Um, yes. So basically, we have also been experimenting with both providing uh, teaching materials uh, online, but also having collaboration between students happening online. When we are talking about joint student products, basically we had a number of different products running uh, with a total of around 55 students. And we have, I have depicted the different models for the collaboration here. So on one hand, uh, we have students who don't work so closely together. So they work on a joint problem and then they are basically working independently. And in the end, they they fit the, uh, the two different parts together into a joint report. Of course, they also collaborate during the way they give feedback to each other. They have regular meetings. They discuss the problem analysis together, but uh, essentially they are working more independently and then we are seeing that it's more and more joint. Here in the second model, there are elements of the products which are um, similar, or which are the same, which are joint. In the third model, we are seeing real joint problem analysis. So that is the problem analysis that goes through all the different student products uh, and can also include more joint work. And in the fourth model, uh, they are really doing not only working on the same problem, but also doing uh, writing up the, the project report or the thesis report together. Uh, in the groups we have had uh, students from at least two different countries and we usually had between three and around ten students in the group, so from small groups to large groups. Um, if we look at the timeline that we have been running, then, uh, then it works the way that in the beginning the students are applying uh, to be part of the project. Uh, we have the project assignment, so we assign students to projects. And I think this is quite an ideal line because in reality, it also uh, we also had students being onboarded later because in the different universities, um, the, the, time, uh, the timings for signing up for courses and signing up for projects are different. And also the start, the starting time for the semesters and the ending time for the semesters is different. So in order to fit it all in and without, um, yeah, to fit it into all the rules, we have to be a little bit flexible. And we also have to be a little bit flexible about when to start. So mainly kickoff is in our physical seminar 
which was this year held in, in February in Hamburg. But we also have a preparation phase before that where the students are following online modules that prepare them to work with uh, problem-based learning, uh, uh, entrepreneurship, sustainability, and so on. Then after the, the seminar is a five-day full seminar, so a full program for five days. And then we start the virtual collaboration phase where the students are working in groups. And usually there would be a possibility here for an additional meeting. But in 2020, that was uh, all cancelled due to the COVID-19 situation. The duration of the project work, work it, it depends a little bit between the universities. Uh, so we have to be a little bit flexible also when it comes to, to hand-in time and local project defense. Uh, I would say that uh, after going through the last year uh, and after working more on the sustainable development goals, actually we might be missing something in the end related to the project handover. In the case that projects are handed over either to the students who will be working or prepared for handing over to the students who will continue working on the project or to the uh, to those who benefit from the products that could be NGOs, um, companies, other organizations. But the handover is important in order to have a strong impact. Um, compared to the, the other years, then the last year um, we had, which was this year, we were using the Sustainable Development Goals as the overall framework. So that is what was binding the different products together. And I've listed here the, the different uh, goals that we have been working with uh, but what it means is that in the previous years we would have students working on 10 different projects and they would they would uh, discuss with each other but they would also see the projects as 10 very different projects but now we help the students to see how all the projects were basically contributing to a common good and that also meant that even though the technical level um, some, some projects were very technical, some were less technical. And, and before they say, yeah, but how does that fit together? But this became much more clear this year that they are all contributing to solving the same problem. And it also meant that we could easily bind it together during the, the seminar uh, in Hamburg because we, we could include in the program Introduction to Sustainable Development Goals where the students would discuss how their product fit into the goals um, to have a student keynote on sustainability and also on a, a keynote on the complexity of problem solving that was uh, exactly working with not only the technical but also the social and, uh, and the human aspects of sustainability. And that is something that all the students or many most of the students will be able to see how it fit in their products. Uh, here, are, here are the different product titles. I'll just list them here to have them in the presentation. So basically, uh, uh, broad, I would especially like to highlight the three last ones, which are the ones uh, done in collaboration with the University of Brasilia, because they were based on a case of uh, waste pickers in, in Brazil. So, uh, so in Brasilia, yeah, they were closing the world's second largest dump site in 2018. And now they're trying to help the waste picker, with the waste pickers, more than 1,200 people working on picking in the waste and trying to help them to get better lives. And actually those last three projects are dealing uh, with different aspects of how to help those people in the best way. Um, when we look at the students' evaluations, we can see that they're very positive. So on a scale from one to, si one to five, basically we are scoring uh, almost four on all the the one, so 4.6, 61% uh, of the students actually found that this was a, a five. So it shows that the students are very happy in working this way. And also looking at the personal impact on the students was also very positive. Um, um, also very positive evaluations. Uh, we can also see what they're writing. And it's not surprising, it's very in line with what we also were discussing with the students during the week, that they found it highly motivating to work with the Sustainable Development Goals. They like to work on products that can really make a, a social and environmental difference. And they appreciate working in international and interdisciplinary environments. And they also found that the, the groups were working towards a common goal. On the other hand, there is also something we can, of course, uh, learn about it and I have also included some of the learning points uh, later on in the conclusion. 
So here, in the overall conclusions, we can say that international cross-disciplinary collaboration on solving real-world problems is good. It's good for the students' learning, but it's also good for the students' motivation, and it's also good for showing uh, the surrounding society what engineering can do. Um, we see that uh, the sustainable development goals actually are a very powerful framework for the student projects because it gives it can bind them together and it can give it a joint frame that we didn't have before. Um, what is important is it's very important as we see it to align learning objectives and assessment with the project work and sustainability. Uh, so sustainability becomes an integrated part of the curricula and not just a toning of existing work uh, learning activities, but really re really integrated in the learning objectives. So they, they are also evaluated on it uh, and assessed on it in the exams. Um, it's also very important to work uh, closely together with stakeholders and to scope the projects carefully. And um, sometimes we also have to look, or at least we would suggest also look at learning object objectives, if it's possible to include the handover process. Because the handover process is often something that's not in the learning objective today, but it's an important part um, for the, of, of the students' learning in order for what they're going to do later. And it's actually a very important part of creating the impact we like to create. And then it's important to prepare both students and supervisors on working with sustainability. Uh, and sustainability not only in a, from a technical point of view, but also uh, with social, cultural and economic aspects. So with this, I would like to say thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, we think that uh, this way of working might not be perfect, but at least it's a very good direction to go. Thank you.